Welcome, everybody, to the weekly WP Roundup with BJ Keaton. That is me, and every Friday afternoon, we go live and talk about all of the best news and tutorials and resources that we could find this week about WordPress. I uh, want to welcome everybody for to for coming out. I want to thank everyone for coming out. And I uh, and I just got distracted by the comments again. I uh, want to uh, invite you to please uh, take part in the conversation. This is a very open ended show. We uh, always try to uh, to get along, have a conversation. So please, any questions or comments that you have please feel free to uh, throw them in the live chat of this video, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube. Um, all of the uh, links that we'll be talking about today and probably a lot more are in the description of this video. So please make sure that you expand it, uh, click through and give the content creators the love that they deserve for being giving us the opportunity to be able to do this. Um, that said, I uh, want to uh, read through the comments that I've got so far because I got distracted by them. <laughs> and uh, I'm glad to see everyone being able to come in and, uh, and join us again from all over the world, from Cyprus and uh, Iowa and all the way to the UK. A couple in the UK I see. Uh, it's just uh, it's just wonderful. It always makes me feel so good to see everybody here. Um, and no Uncle Social. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, there is absolutely no me strumming the bass guitar or any other kind of guitar. No one wants me to play an instrument ever. I have zero musical ability. That is all. Uh, I'll leave that to everybody else who has any amount of talent for that. But nope, you should not picture that. It would be a disaster. Um, Anyway, I want to move on into the uh, to the news. Uh, this week, the biggest news that I really found and wanted to talk about, kind of at length, was uh, a WP Tavern article that they posted that really outlined what WordPress as a whole, as a platform, is going to be looking at over the next year. That uh, the rest of 2020, we've got most of the uh, year left, uh, which is strange given that everything that's happened in the first uh, first quarter. Um, we, I wanted to kind of go through this and let you know what to expect by the time uh, WordPress 5.6 
is released uh, at the end of the year. Uh, that's the plan. So um, right now, uh, they're, they're planning for the next release on 5.5 for having automatic updates for everything so that like if you want to be able to have plugins automatically update, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, on an individual basis. So you'll be able to say that you want the Divi Builder to update, even though you might not want Yoast to update, something like that. Um, you'll be able to, to pick and choose however you wanted to do it. Um, also, there is going to be, what well, I think this is really cool because I like the Gutenberg plugin. Uh, I think that it's going to be great to have a block directory uh, integration where you're going to be able to find individual kinds of blocks, not just block enabled plugins like they have now, but a uh, block directory uh, to find individual blocks. Um, it is an experimental feature right now in Gutenberg 6.5 but it uh, that was introduced in Gutenberg 6.5, excuse me, but um, it will be you know rolled out to everybody uh, who is, doesn't have the beta plugin installed. Um, I think that it's a very interesting idea. I like the fact that uh, that we're able to do that. My watch just dinged, so I forgot to turn it on silent. Um, the uh, I like that you can go in and get individual kinds of blocks because they tend to be a little bit lighter than full-fledged plug-in uh, suites that have tons and tons that you may not uh, necessarily want. Um, that said, the big thing that's coming by the end of the year, and this is one that I think we should all prepare for, and that you're already used to since you're Divi users, is full site editing. They're uh, working on making every last part of the WordPress site uh, editable by any kind of any kind of uh, block. So you're going to have header blocks and sidebar blocks and footer blocks, and you can really do anything that you want in any of them, just like the theme builder. I mean, that's what it's going to be. So uh, Gutenberg is moving uh, WordPress as a whole into that kind of theme builder space where you're going to uh, be able to, to do a lot more, but also you're going to have to uh, kind of walk clients through uh, what's there, what they can mess with, what they can't, uh, that kind of thing to be able to get, um, excuse me, to be able to get the full power uh, to be able to not ruin things. So I, I like that they're gonna, there's going to be full site editing. Um, that said, it's also going to have uh, block areas, like you're going to be able to do widgets, like they're basically going to be transitioning from widgets to blocks. So anything that you currently use as a widget, you're going to be able to use as a block, uh, or you're going to be able to have a block for that. Um, it's going to be, it's already experimental in the Gutenberg plugin, but this will be rolled out in, uh, in the future this year. So if you haven't messed around with it, these are going to be major changes to the way that we do work and to the way that you do work uh, and your clients interact with the platform. So I wanted y'all to be aware of this stuff that's coming up so that you can uh, prep for it and uh, just do the research on it. Um, they're going to have a global styles feature uh, that's coming in as well, which I think is really, really neat. Um, I obviously love the Divi global styles. I think it's uh, going to be nice to be able to have some base WordPress global styles and then be able to do page globals on uh, the Divi level. Um, it's going to be a lot uh, nicer to be able to, uh, to do stuff like that. It looks pretty. You can click through and see some mock-ups and examples of what these are. But um, the big thing that's happening in... Um, the big thing that's happening in 5.6 and before, like by the end of the year here, is that we are going to be able to do site-wide editing. Remember that. It's going to be really important. Sorry, I have a an eyelash in my eye, and it's killing me. I apolo truly apologize. Um, but the big thing is going to be full site editing, that we're going to be able to do everything with Gutenberg. So there's going to be a, a transition and opportunity for y'all to be able to pick up clients and uh, as maybe con... con consultants to be able to uh, to teach them how to use Divi or use Divi to move one site to the, to, uh, the other. Also, uh, they're going to have built-in sitemaps, and uh, one of the big things that I think is uh, 
uh, neat that they announced is a navigation block, which is basically a header menu blocks that you block that you can put anywhere uh, that blocks can go. And uh, so it's like our menu module. And I think that's something that really uh, Gutenberg needs. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how it plays around with uh, everything else. So I just liked this stuff. I, I like looking at what's coming up. I like seeing what is going on in the uh, in WordPress's future. I like to see what we can do as an industry to prep for it. Because as, as developers and designers, y'all are the ones that really need to be able to... To, uh, to be prepared for what's coming and be able to plan your business a ahead of time. We talked a little bit last week. Um, is the, we talked a little bit last week on uh, kind of having to maybe pivot the business models that we look at and that, that we're running under. Um, that uh, excuse me that uh, that this is going to be one of those things where if you think about what's going on with WordPress over the year, you can think about some more things to maybe pivot into. I apologize. I got distracted by uh, comments. Um, Bertrand asks on uh, Facebook, uh, if uh, these are the modules from Extra, and uh, no, these are uh, the upcoming Gutenberg uh, block editor modules. That these are uh, what are going to be in the core editor for WordPress. So they're going to they're going to be able to uh, uh, be available to everybody. So I just wanted everyone to be aware of what's coming up. Um, that. Uh, and uh, Lucas asked, will you record this session and make it available later? And yes, if anybody needs to come back to this at any later time, uh, as soon as the stream is over, it will be available uh, for you to for you to watch at any point. There is the entire like two and a half year archive of this show on our Facebook and YouTube pages. Uh, so you'll be able to find it uh, as soon as uh, Facebook and YouTube are able to process it and get it uh, posted up. So you'll be able to come back to that. Um I also see uh, Terry, uh, excuse me if I mispronounced that, uh, is Matt M. trying to kill Divi with Gutenberg? Um, I heard, I've heard that asked before, and I've heard that asked a lot about the other page builders as well, is, uh, you know, is, is uh, Matt really trying to put, uh, you know, Elementor and Divi and Beaver Builder, all of us, out of business with this? And I think that it is a really big compliment to us that we have been so forward thinking that uh, that they're wanting to really take what we do and make it the base of what the platform is. Now, that said, I don't think that they're trying to kill us. Um, I think that there are really, uh, there are a lot of good things that could come from Gutenberg. I think that with these blocks and the things that they do are fundamental and basic in terms of what uh, theme editors can do and what full page builders can do that uh, those folks who are using this as a theme editor, who are using this, this upcoming full site experience, are going to eventually move into Divi or one of the others, but hopefully Divi, and you guys can help with that, uh, but move from Gutenberg into Divi when they need the more advanced features that we have. The... Um, that's one thing that we are, are very confident in is that we're going to be staying light years ahead of what is possible when you're dealing with a core software. So when you have these beginner users see what they can do with a full site editor, they're going to go looking for people like you who can then introduce them uh, and teach them how to use the more robust builders out there like Divi. So no, I don't think that they're trying to kill it at all. I think that it's a business opportunity and that our our business is going to get stronger as people see both the power in page builders and the limitations that come with Gutenberg. And I'm someone who uses Gutenberg on my side projects. I'm someone who likes what they do, and I combine Gutenberg and Divi all the time. So it's uh, it's something that I think is a good thing that it seems um, that it seems like it's uh, it's kind of a you know what what's going to happen here, but it's. The way that open source works and the way that including something in core, you're never going to be uh, never going to be able to include the, the robust features that any of the premium uh, theme builders can do and page builders can do. So, no, not going to kill us at all. I think it's a good thing. And uh, especially for y'all, uh, 
y'all designers out there who are champion uh, championing us on the ground. So uh, much, much love to y'all. Um, let me see. I've missed quite a bit on YouTube. Um, <laughs> MB says, could you tell ET to stop those scroll tutorials? Uh, there's too many just saying, uh, we joke about that, that we're having a lot of fun with the, <laughs> with the, um, with the scroll tutorials that there's a lot going on. Um, I'm not sure what other tutorials are in the, uh, queue for the next few weeks, but I know that there is a really, really cool one that I don't believe has been published yet that you're going to like that has to deal with global headers. So, um, nope, that was actually published today. Awesome. I had missed it. Uh, the get a free global header and footer template for Divi's leather company layout. Uh, that's one thing that I know I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that that becomes a regular thing that as, uh, additions to the theme layouts, we'll have posts like that instead of scroll effects, more, uh, global headers and footers and things. So it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, we, I, we joke about the, uh, you know, let's see what we can do with scroll this week, uh, in our meeting. So it's cool. Um, and BJ, uh, uh, can, you can tell, uh, someone was a teacher when they compare two things we know and one that we might not Gutenberg. Um, it's true. I was a teacher for eight years. So it's one of those things that's just ingrained living in academics until I guess two years ago, uh, whenever I started at ET, um, uh, I'd been in school and all my life. So yeah, you just do what you know, right? Um, and uh, Uncle Social says uh, fewer animated items scrolling and maybe more good design tips and sensible Divi workflow processes. Um, as far as I know, Uncle Social, those kinds of things are in the works. Um, and I say that not uh, to, to say that they're replacing the others, but I know we're looking at a lot of uh, ways to expand the Divi category and the design category. So look for some uh, really cool things in the uh, upcoming months in terms of that kind of stuff, too. Um, MT Melody asked when a new Divi update will come, and I don't know. Uh, I asked that at our uh, previous meeting, and I don't have a timeline on it. Uh, we don't have any kind of ETA. Um, I always hate to say it's done when it'll be when it's done, uh, but that one is, uh, that's all I've got right now. Um, and yeah, Daryl Jordan says, uh, regarding Gutenberg and, uh, the block editor, uh, that WordPress has to compete with Wix and Squarespace out of the box, and, uh, that's it. Like that is at base what it is that so many people see Squarespace. They have such a really good marketing department, uh, Wix too, um, that they see these as being really easy and they saw going into WordPress as more website building as opposed to drag and drop stuff that they knew. Um, I've had that conversation with multiple people who started their site on Wix. They're like, yeah, it was just easy. I can drag stuff and you know, do it. And I'm like, you know, I make that software, right? Well, not me personally, but he's like, you know, my company, we do that for WordPress. And I'm like, really? And it's like, people don't know this stuff is out there. So I think Gutenberg, uh, and that kind of thing is going to be able to open up WordPress to even more people. MB says that the Gutenberg uh, at this point is just one big mess. Uh, I hate it. I cannot see a point in mixing Divi and Gutenberg. Um, that uh, uh, after Gutenberg uh, should drop WordPress and go for a lighter and faster backend for Divi. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, I know we like uh, WordPress. I know that's one thing that we do actually really like. I have no idea what the future of uh, Divi may hold. Wouldn't it be really cool to see a Squarespace style uh, Divi out there? Um, you know, that's one of those like long-term like like dreams. Like, That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, Gutenberg is a big mess. That's actually why I don't have the plugin installed anymore. I only use the core uh, block editor uh, because I kept getting way too many errors in the beta plugin. But the stuff that is included in the core does seem to work pretty well. I've had a lot of, a lot of luck with that. Um, and uh, Uncle Social says that uh, Squarespace is still so much simpler for a client, uh, e for client e-commerce sites than WP and Woo. Uh, Handover is far easier. I wish there was a simpler version of Woo, uh, Woo Basics. That'd be really cool. Um, I know a friend, uh, one of my uh, friends is a developer and uh, he is... Well, he's a developer and he is a marketing director as well now. He used to be a developer. And when he does stuff like that, he actually goes with Shopify instead of Woo because of the platform, because of the uh, the power and the support and the simplicity of it, that he can hand it off easier. Uh, that That is absolutely a big part of it. 
And I think that Woo is getting a little simpler. I think there are things that you can do with Woo now that you couldn't before a lot easier. And uh, they're working toward that simplicity. But Woo Basics would be great. Uh, Dave asked if there are blocks to Divi module converter soon. Oh, man, that would be a uh, heck of a uh, an automated tool. Uh, I would love that. Uh, get to writing that, Dave. We write in React as well, so it may not be uh, be terribly bad. So you can check our documentation from uh, version 3.1 uh, where we updated the developer hooks to be able to figure out how uh, how to uh, react, how they react together, huh? Eh? Uh, um, but no, that would be really cool. But they are written in the same language now, so that kind of thing would be able to uh, would be able to happen if somebody wrote it. Um, I don't think it's going to come from us, but uh, that would be a very awesome thing to put in our upcoming marketplace. I think people would like that. Um, wondering uh, Divi. Body Commerce providing WooCommerce login page customization, checkout customization, uh, Divi Commerce Supreme Pro, a side by side button options, much more. Uh, why is Divi not? Uh, Biswanath, uh, Biswanath, I, I apologize on, on getting your name uh, wrong. Um, Divi is working on that. We have an upcoming WooCommerce update with, with I guess, volume two of our WooCommerce modules. Last I heard, it was 17 uh, that should be coming out uh, with more customization options. I just haven't heard um, where that is in development in a while. Uh, that was one of the around next three to five that I was told. Like it was, you know, things shuffle around in development, just kind of move in different places, kind of like a shell game. But uh, that one is coming. So we'll have that soon. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, well, not cross my fingers. I'm going to use air quotes for soon uh, because I haven't heard anything, but it is on the uh, precipice here where we'll get that uh, sooner than late rather than later. Um MB says that WordPress should be a fast CMS uh, backend and Gutenberg should be a plugin. Um, yeah, uh, I liked it better when it was a plugin. Um, that way I could disable it when I needed to. But uh, knock on wood, uh, as we say here in the South, that uh, I I uh, have not run into the problems that I did when it was a plugin. So uh, MT Melody says how to speed up a Divi website. Um, the number one way that I've sped it up is, well, I guess number one and number two is, uh, using a caching plugin. Uh, WP rocket has been the fastest for me. I've also had good luck with W3 super cash. Uh, no W3 fastest cast cash and WP W3 and WP super, whichever, <laughs> however those are put around, uh, W3 fastest WP super cash. Those are the ones that I've had the luck with. Like, I always get them confused on typing them in. Um, but they, uh, those are the three that I've had best. Um, and also the um, image optimization plugins, uh, Smush, uh, Imagify, Tiny Ping, uh, those uh, speed it up a lot. And we're working on some uh, code enhancements for uh, upcoming updates as well. Uh, optimizations, I shouldn't say enhancements, um, because optimi optimizing how everything is handled. So that it will speed up soon. Um, and yeah, Daryl, uh, Daryl Uncle Social talking. Um, and uh, Shripe and Bart uh, ask, what software do you use to live stream on YouTube? It's good. Um, well, it's a combination. Uh, I use OBS as the actual streaming software, uh, not Streamlabs OBS, not Slobs, but just regular old OBS. Um, I used to use Wirecast, but I've actually found that I like OBS better. Um, and then I have uh, Restream as the uh, Restreamer, uh, as kind of a hub to split it between Facebook and YouTube. Uh, those are, uh, those are the best, uh, that's the way that we do it. Or at least I do. I think that's how everybody's still doing it on the team. Um, I'm glad it's good. I'm glad it's working out well. Um, and Divi, uh, Biswana, the Divi should also make a feature to make documentation, to put documentation in websites. Um, there is a need for that. There are some documentation plugins that I've found in the past, uh, that make it easier to do, but the, uh, but yeah, it's uh, uh, 
documentation is one of those things that's super hard to do. And those of you who don't know, this is just a plug for Divi here. Uh, those of you who don't know, if you have need documentation for Divi and you're anywhere, you can uh, open it up in the builder, hit help, and uh, the videos do play from the documentation right there in the builder. So, uh, and MB, no, don't tell them to install Elementor. Uh, it's a good builder. I mean, I can't say anything about that. I like Divi's workflow and everything so much better. Uh, personally, that's why I use it. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, shaking my finger at you. Um, Mendel asks, uh, how do you put ads with Divi? Uh, for me, I use a uh, plugin called Ad Inserter. Um, you can also use our, uh, if you have specific places on a page that you want them, you can use our code module for that. Um, that's what I've done in the uh, past is use the code module to uh, just stick ad, ad code where I need it in this spot all the time on this page and we'll just put it in there uh, from like Google AdSense or anything along those lines. Um, put the banner or anything around in there. Other people I'm sure have uh, much uh, more elegant solutions than that because I've always just been very utilitarian when it comes to stuff uh, along the advertising lines. And... Uh, Asks, uh, Biswanath asks, is there any chance of a Divi pop-up uh, builder update? Uh, that uh, I have not heard about the pop-up builder update. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything that I've heard on that recently. And there's I can't remember anything about the pop-up builder. Uh, we have Bloom... But um, in terms of customizing through uh, Divi, I'm assuming, I think it's coming, but I haven't heard anything. Um, and uh, 147 Dev, asking any chance of doing a GT Metrics tutorial, things like adding expired headers uh, with cookie free domains, etc. Um, I did a very basic one a little while ago, but I didn't dig into stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's something I'll definitely take a look at uh, to see how it would fit into the editorial calendar. Uh, that's one that, um, excuse me, that's one that I know people need. Um, the expiring headers is one that I know I didn't include in my tutorial earlier because I would have had to have been back and forth in touch with uh, site site ground to be able to get support uh, back and forth to do it from the access I had in my cPanel. So that was actually why it wasn't included. Like it would have, it just pushed stuff way out, uh, then be able to put it in that one. Um, and, uh, Mendel asks, uh, also, is there any, uh, photo plugin for Divi for photography? Um, Plugins, I'm not sure about for Divi. Uh, we have the gallery module, things like that. I know that there are other people in the comments right now who are watching, uh, who are watching, can uh, testify to different photo plugins. I know Video Superhero has a few. I think it was Next Gen Gallery for him. Um, I'm not sure about any of the others. I'm sure there are some that really play really super nicely with Divi that I'm just not aware of. Excuse me. I uh, see Bertrand ask, uh, uh, where do I find your shirt? Uh, on me, silly. Um, no, uh, those generally come from Divi meetups and uh, when we're at WordCamps, things like that. So um, the number one way right now to get them is to be go to an official Divi meetup and uh, eventually we're working on getting t-shirts out to the official Divi meetups as they, uh, as they grow and move into uh, different areas. Given that everyone is on quarantine in the world right now, uh, the Divi meetups are kind of suspended, uh, I believe, for the moment. So uh, I can't say that that is, you know, you can't go out tomorrow night, uh, meet up and uh, grab any. But I know that one of the things that uh, we have uh, planned for the Divi meetup network and uh, Raquel can pr and uh, can probably answer the question a lot more uh eloquently and specifically than I can, but uh, the the Divi shirts are uh, going to be available uh, whenever the Divi meetup network uh, becomes available as the groups grow. So uh, y'all will be able to absolutely, um, absolutely be able to get you a Divi shirt. They are uh, fantastic. I love them. And uh, uh, I have, I really think I have like four now. It's, it's, it's great. I love them. Almost one for every day of the week, y'all. Um, I see, uh, 
Daryl said, I think I should get one since I got sick right before WordCamp US last year. Just saying. <laughs> that stinks that you did. That is That stinks. Um, I know... Uh, I know that that uh, that kind of thing is just heartbreaking, and and specifically for me, when I've missed things like that, when I've missed events because of sickness or something came up, it's always the swag that I miss the most. It's like, oh, I see people uh, with this cool stuff. It makes me it makes me really sad. Um, I did the uh, Star Wars half marathon at Disney World uh, that that whole weekend with races uh, in 2018, and uh, it was awesome. Got shirts. I love the, the shirts, everything like that. But I saw people in like Avengers runs that they didn't have anymore uh, from had like an Infinity Gauntlet right here from their Infinity Gauntlet challenge. And uh, I got so sad. I had that FOMO of uh, like, oh, man, I missed out. I, I couldn't I can't get that shirt. And I've been looking for one on the Internet in my size ever since. But, yeah, I get it. Like it's the it's the swag for missing stuff that uh, that I miss. Uh, and every lifetime licensee should come with a shirt. Uh, that's a lot of back end stuff. Again, Dave, if you uh, want to need to get a new job, work uh, work as a packager supplier, that would be great. Um, uh, as people are asking about uh, Divi uh, Divi tutorials, um, I like obviously our uh, elegant themes uh, blog and uh, YouTube channel. They've got a lot. Max stuff is good. Um, I'm is it WP now that does stuff? I can't remember. There's a, there are a lot out there and there are some, uh, there are some blogs and roundups on our blog that uh, deal with those as well uh, for finding them. Just honestly, I would Google like YouTube channel, Divi YouTube uh, channels, things like that, and go onto our blog and search for it and you'll see that. Um, and video, yeah, um, I hate, Custom field data, uh, what would be cool using custom field data for the theme builder? I thought it was there, realizing it's not. Uh, oh, ruined your life now. Um, I didn't know that it wasn't there either. Does it not, are there not ways to integrate like ACF with uh, with that? Because uh, I don't, I haven't uh, uh, checked that in a while. Um, and Sanu, Son, Sanu NCS uh, asked Monarch and Bloom updates. When can we expect them? I don't know. I have not heard a word of that in a while. I have no clue. Uh, that one completely, completely uh, clueless on that. Um, I see Mike Gray asks on Facebook, any good place for extra starter tutorials? And unfortunately, I don't actually know any. Like we don't have uh, very much um, extra content on uh, the blog recently. Um, and I don't know of a lot outside of our YouTube channel uh, for extra specifically, um, but anything that applies to Divi uh, will also apply to extra. They uh, run on the same uh, foundation, the Divi builder, all the layout packs, the theme builder, everything works along with extra. It'll just have the custom uh, category uh, modules that are really awesome, but um, that would absolutely be uh, the place to start just looking at Divi tutorials, but I don't, I don't know any like full on resource for extra because Divi just kind of uh, over overshadows it because of the power that it has. Um, oh, everybody wants to uh, gang up on me and take my shirt. I'm seeing on YouTube. Uh, that is that's so so sad. Uh, Jay Philpot says regarding all of the tutorials, uh, Anya Romanska on uh, YouTube uh, with a full website build in Divi. That's cool. Thank you for uh, uh, that. Maybe that'll be able to uh, to help some of the the folks looking for the Divi tutorials. Like that is uh, always a good thing to uh, to know about different uh, work not workplace workflow tutorials, which is why I actually like the use case that we do on Tuesdays. Uh, Jason and Donietta, just watching them use Divi is uh, a learning experience. It's an object lesson. I'm seeing uh, lots of people coming in. Hello, uh, I'm I'm good. Uh, not going to be able to pronounce that uh, your name, but I'm good. I'm absolutely fantastic right now, uh, honestly. And uh, and yeah, uh, 147 Dev, you're welcome. I will uh, for sure. Uh, check into that and see what I can do uh, with the with the GT metric stuff because that's always 
an issue. Those kind of things are are pretty much never going to not be issues for folks. Um, and Antonio uh, Pinto on YouTube asks, is that performance update plan for the foreseeable future? And yes. Um, the last I heard was that it was a yes. I have not heard anything different. I know that it was at the forefront of uh, the devs the last I heard in terms of when that uh, foreseeable future is. I'm not sure how far out that was, but it was one of the uh, next updates that we were told about that was like, I shouldn't say next. Let me say, let me, let me take that back and not say next. That was one of the priorities that they were working on at that point to, uh, to get out. So I'm not sure, again, where that falls in line with other updates, but I know that was one of the major projects will, uh, that was being worked on uh, early on uh, last I heard earlier this year. Um, so, uh, Video Superhero said he wrote a small plugin for the WooCommerce shop manager role. Uh, can't for the life of me find a tutorial on how to access a role, uh, to give ad admin permissions for a single plugin. Hmm. And... Huh. Let me see. I'm going to I'm going to throw a plug in at you uh that I've used in the past. Um I don't have any idea if this is going to uh to help you. Uh, um and I say this, uh, I say that with a smile on my face because you might be able I haven't dug into the really really advanced parts of this and how you can do it. Um this uh, this plugin uh, video is this uh, plugin is called User Role Editor, uh, very very aptly named. Um, but it is uh, one that you can go in and customize different roles for different things, and you can sort it by the actual uh, in like coded permission. Uh, you might be able to build something like that into your plug-in and then enable it. I've, I've seen them add single plug-in. Um, I've used it a bunch. Like that's one that I can say uh, that I've used uh, that particular uh, user role editor uh, a bunch. I've never had the first uh, issue with it. Uh, not saying that there aren't any, uh, but that was one that I've personally uh, got installed, I think on three different sites right now. Um, but it's, it has shown up, I know, individual settings from different plugins when I've installed it. Um, and in terms of looking for a codec style tutorial, that I do not know about. Um, I wish I could help you on that one, I do. Um, because that would be something that I, that's something that I cannot write, but that's something that I'm actually going to write down as an idea. Uh, Because that one, that's a fantastic idea. You're right. I don't know of any uh, tutorials out there on how just to apply a single, a single edit and a single role to a, uh, to a thing, uh, to a user from a particular plugin. I, I wish I did. But like I said, I'm writing that down to see if I can figure it, uh, figure it out. And if we can, can get it on hours or I see it, I'll definitely send it to you whenever. Uh, if I, I say whenever, but uh, if I'm able to find one, I'll totally send it to you. Uh, because that that is an absolute pain, I know. But like I said, that plugin, I've seen it do it. But yeah, we, whether or not you trust being able to do it, I don't know. Uh, I can't do that. But I've 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 liked what I've seen out of it before. It was fairly light as well. Um, let me think. Let me see here. I can't. I keep clicking on the wrong thing here. Um, sorry. Let me see. Let me get back over here to my to my notes. Um, <laughs> I see someone on uh, Facebook saying uh, get uh, ultimate members for uh, to get T-shirts from uh, YouTube or uh, on Facebook. That would be that would be that would be a good idea. Um, 
Let's see. Okay, so uh, to get into the tutorials before we run out of time and move forward a little bit, I come back to the comments in a minute. Um, I wanted to give you guys the uh, some of the new cool stuff uh, that I know you're going to love because it's how to design a scroll animated bar counter with Divi. I know you guys are really excited about the scroll options right now. Uh, so that was the first one under tutorials, but it was really cool. So, so check that one out. And then really my favorite one uh, that I saw that we had published uh, was the second one, the how to create a responsive slide in menu uh, with Divi's theme builder. I uh, really, really like this one. Uh, Slide-in menus are always hard to get right, and uh, Donetta's designs are always beautiful. Um, I don't tend to like vertical menus uh, a lot because most of the time they take up too much real estate. This one doesn't. I don't think this one does. It's responsive. It looks nice on mobile, um, and it moves in and out very, very well. So uh, I always... Her, because you click on it, it's got always got the floating hamburger menu in the corner. You click on it and it comes out uh, and, and back in very quickly. It's not something that uh, takes a long time to load on either mobile or desktop. And that is, in my experience, pretty, pretty uh, hard to find. So I wanted to, uh, wanted to point that one out because it was a very, very good one. Um, MB asked for how to create a scroll effect that speeds up Divi. We're on it. Uh, we'll, we'll get there. Um, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Uh, just It just clears your browser's cache as you scroll through the website. Uh, that'd be cool. Um, we've got one on how to clear your browser cache. That uh, if This one uh, I put in here so that you could show your clients what to do first. Um, so many times the fix for whatever problem they're having is clearing the browser's cache. And it's such an easy fix. It's, it, it, is the, the, it is our equivalent of to turn it on and off again, uh, turn it off and on again, rather. Uh, that is something that's the first thing I tell people. Like, well, have you cleared your browser cache? Have you purged the site cache? Uh, that is number one for me. So I wanted to put that we had published this because y'all, if you can just send this link to your clients instead of having to deal with that, it's going to open you up for a lot more uh, actual getting actual work done uh, rather than having to walk them through something like that. So uh, just send them this link. They'll learn how to do it. And uh, maybe they will learn to turn it off and back on again by themselves. Um, and then uh, content snare below that has a link that uh, the title is how to create a profitable virtual summit or conference. These are the hotness right now, y'all. Virtual everything is what we're running on. Uh, the world is virtual right now. We might as well be living in the oasis uh, from Ready Player One because everything is online. I mean, y'all honestly are the most human interaction that I've had all week long because there's so many of you and I've been like, it's, it's crazy. Um, the, um, but virtual summits and conferences, I really enjoy. I've mentioned this before, but this is an incredible detailed, incredibly detailed tutorial on walking through the steps of setting yours up. And uh, like my wife this morning was even in a webinar uh, that was set up kind of like this, that is an ongoing series with, uh, with people coming in and having discussions on this, uh, this uh, same topic. Hers is library marketing. And this is uh, something that you can do. You don't have to have a giant following. You don't have to have, uh, you know, 50 to 60, 150,000 people on an email list to be able to get it going and get profitable. Uh, this is something that you can do and you can definitely work with other people on. And I just wanted right now, again, think about ways that you can pivot your business. Um, if there are ways that you, uh, uh, can make money, uh, provide services for your clients, and really uh, get out there right now since everything is kind of uncertain. Uh, this would be one way to do it if you have the infrastructure and uh, training and, and willingness to set it up. Um, then this one is just for UMB, 
uh, how to create module overlaps with uh, on scroll with Divi scroll effects. Um, this one was really pretty. I like this one. Uh, again, I'm not going to uh, to linger on it uh, because y'all can see all of the uh, tutorials wherever they are. But I like overlap and I like overlap animations especially. Uh, and this one happens as you scroll uh, slides a card up uh, as you scroll through your site that on mobile it looks excellent. So uh, just check that out. MB, I know that you are uh, very much looking forward to including those in your uh, your designs. So I uh, figured I would get you that one out there. I'm sorry, I tickled myself because I was being, I tickled myself because I'm being a jerk. Um, but, uh, but, but seriously, it is a, it is a pretty one. Um, now this next one, is something I want to actually point out to all of you. Uh, I know last week, um, and I can't remember uh, the person's name uh, who was asking last week, um, was talking about ways to get work right now. That uh, ways, you know, that freelancing stuff has kind of dried up in some areas. Uh, some industries have uh, stopped freelancing nearly as much right now as, as everything is uncertain. And this next one is called How to Create an Online Ordering System for Restaurants. And this one uses WooCommerce. So y'all are, y'all are pretty familiar with this. And the reason I bring this up in that context is that when we were talking about that, Excuse me. Um, when we were talking about that last week, it really got me thinking about stuff that was local around here and how much stuff has changed. I ordered dinner last night, and the first place that I went to uh, had actually taken itself off of DoorDash. They had changed from DoorDash to a different service, and some of them have taken themselves completely off, uh, stopped using that service, and done everything in-house regarding delivery and ordering and online ordering, put in their own ordering systems. Um, so that got me thinking when I saw this specifically to show y'all this one in particular, that the how to create an online ordering system for restaurants, I would love to give this uh, tutorial to y'all uh, and tell you to take this, learn this, and reach out to local restaurants in your area and see if they need this. If you have a working demo of this uh, that you can say, hey, uh, I noticed that you don't take orders online or uh, for pickup or delivery. A lot of places I know my area doesn't do dine-in anymore uh, for at least the next month or so. Uh, it's all takeout or delivery. So, uh, or drive through, uh, but that's takeout. And if you can have, say, a demo site of, hey, I've got, I can make you this uh, ordering software so that you get this. It comes through to your email or text or however you can set up the notifications to them, uh, work with their POS system, uh, whatever, and show them, hey, I can do this for you. I can have this up and running by the end of the day or end of the week. Probably not day, obviously, but end of the week, whatever it is, because you're already aware of WooCommerce, this is a good way to drum up some business. And it's something that, honestly, I, as a consumer, need. Uh, it is, uh, I, we cook a lot, but there are nights where it's like, oh my God, why do I, I'm just going to order something. And that's, uh, that's something that you uh, very, very, very much can help people with. Because they don't take, if, you have, if they have it themselves, they're not taking a percentage loss from one of the delivery services. Uh, so you can you can put it that way. Like right now, it also helps them keep their own people employed because they're hosting their own deliveries uh, using their own staff as opposed to outsourcing it with something like DoorDash or Grub South as one of ours Postmates. Uh, so you can, you can check that out. Um, it's a good idea. Uh, to, to, I think at least to be able to see if, uh, they have an online ordering system. And I know there's some around my area who all they do for an online menu is post up a new PDF every week as their menus change, um, which works. It's fine. It's great. They post an image of it up on Facebook. We look and we see if anything's there. Uh, but there are, but you can't order there. You have to call and do everything. But if you can set something up like this, it's a, uh, it really wins for everybody. So Hopefully, somebody here uh, will be able to get some use out of that. But I really did think uh, in terms of right now, I know at least 
two businesses locally who took themselves off of the delivery system and started doing it on their own. Uh, and I know of at least two more that uh, could benefit from it, from this in particular. Um, so, and there are more than that. Those are just the ones like off the top of my head that I thought of when I saw the article. Um, so good luck. I hope that helps somebody out there. Um, uncle social says, uh, and, uh, Dave or uncle social says the Anya Romanska YouTube channel tutorial. Uh, yeah, that was the one, uh, that, that we mentioned earlier. I'm glad that, uh, you, uh, Glad you were able to, to mention that one because I couldn't remember the name either. Um, and then Uncle Social also says, I always check a, uh, if a takeaway has their own site for ordering. I don't like the huge commissions that awful gig economy businesses like Uber Eats, uh, Deliveroo, DoorDash, and how they treat their workers. Yeah, um, there are... there. I'm not a fan of the gig economy at all uh, in an overall economic sense. Um, I think that it do, it has a... It has helped a lot of people right now, given that they can do stuff. Uh, and it is that there are service workers out there who can make major tips from people uh, stuck in their houses right now uh, doing services uh, that those of us, uh, we can't. So I love that they're there. Uh, things like Instacart, DoorDash, all of it. Uh, but yeah, if I'm able to give a restaurant directly that money, I will. Um and then uh, Bertrand on uh, Facebook, going back to a different one that we were talking about earlier with the scroll effects. Uh, Bertrand says, scroll effects are way better than hover since the users are mostly on mobile. I still like hover effects on mobile uh, because I've gotten used to tapping once. I'll, uh, that's all I'll say. Um, but yeah, so we've only got a few minutes left. Uh, so I'm going to run run through these a little bit uh a little bit quickly, just to give you a, a highlight reel kind of of what's uh, in here so that you can expand the video description and click on them yourselves. Um, there is a webfactoryltd.com uh, article that ha is a beginner's guide to keyword research. This benefits everyone. Uh, just read it. Um, it's keyword research is both very simple and very difficult. Um, I made a point when I was teaching to tell my students that there's a big difference in simple and easy, uh, just because something is simple, it might have one step that that is simple. But if that one step is swim across the Atlantic ocean, that is a very difficult step. That is not easy. Uh, so there is uh, definitely keyword research is definitely simple. You can see the numbers typing it in, but uh, actually making use of them and interpreting it is not easy. Uh, so uh, that's why I always want to point these out to y'all. Um, that uh, that's it's good for everybody to know. We've been talking about Gutenblocks a bunch. So there was a WP Shout article that was a walkthrough from beginning to end of the narrative of making a Gutenblock. Uh, if you haven't tried this, it's a good idea to do it, uh, especially if you are thinking about starting a Divi development to be a part of our marketplace that's coming up. So look through that. Look at the process that it takes from start to finish of setting up a Gutenblock. There is a great WooCommerce article on why customer communication is crucial in times of uncertainty. COVID has really changed the way that businesses work and communicate. I have honestly stopped reading the, I've honestly stopped reading emails that places said, uh, that businesses and brands have sent out, uh, on what they're doing for COVID. Not a lot of it matters. What does matter in those kinds of, in these times are you as a person, as a personal brand, as an individual business, however you, you present yourself to your clients, you reaching out to them and letting them know what's going on, how you're handling this. If you are going to go into a, uh, you know, you're changing the way that you, you work. If nothing is going to change, like if you're reaching out to them, see what they need you to do. If you can pivot some way to help them, that's the kind of communication that's crucial right now. So this is just WooCommerce kind of talking about that. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, George, that was uh, the English teacher and me coming out again. Um, I, I occasionally just have these things that I say, uh, that, 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 I, that I stick to, that I think everybody should really just internalize. Simple and easy is one, and then fair and equal is another. Uh, fair and equal is one of the, the, the connotation and denotation uh, descriptors that I was always uh, trying to get around with people. The idea of uh, fair and equal being different. That uh, let's say that you're going to the to the doctor. This is how one of my colleagues actually explained it to me uh, when I started teaching. I was like, I'm stealing that from my syllabus. Uh, when she promised to treat every student fairly but not equally. Um, so I, I I tried I tried to do this to my students as well. Uh, let's say two people go to the doctor. One of them has a cold. One of them has a broken leg. The doctor uh, sees them both at the same time, completely violating HIPAA, and says, "I can either treat you fairly or equally, uh, but uh, which which would you prefer?" And the uh, they look and they're like, "Well, let." treat me equally. Uh, and he's like, okay, so, uh, you've got a cold. I'm going to give you, uh, tell you to go buy some NyQuil. You've got a broken leg. I'm going to tell you to go home and buy some NyQuil, NyQuil. And they're like, what? That's being treated equally. Being treated fairly is, uh, being treated, uh, according to your symptoms. Uh, he's going to tell this one to go get a good night's rest, get NyQuil, blah, blah, blah. This one, you're going to put the leg in a cast, all of that. And I'm like, that's how I treated my classes. Uh, someone might come up with extended waiting circumstances that may need to be treated differently, but would end with the same result. Uh, it doesn't work for everything, but I always try to get the, the, the gist of, you know, simple and easy and fair and equal, uh, in most contexts, contexts work like that. Uh, I don't know what context this is, but uh, I think it might be our 51st state. Um, and then uh, Uncle Social asks, is anyone else spotting HCAPTCHA taking over from Google's ReCAPTCHA? Cloud Cloudflare did a great blog post on it this month. Uh, I hope Divi supports it soon. It's good not to rely on Google for everything. A, yes, good not to support on Google everything. Uh, but B, I have not seen HCAPTCHA. Um, if, let me think on what the... Cloudflare, that was what I need. Um Age capture cloud flare. Uh, that's one that I want to know more about. Um, we'll see about that. Uh, then uh, check the time. Got a couple. Um, and then I, whoever it was, I can't scroll back up and find it and seek through right now. Who had mentioned my streaming software? Uh, since it's OBS. Um, I don't use Stream Deck, which is what this video also take, uh, takes advantage of, but uh, there is a video about halfway down in the tutorial section on how to use OBS and Stream Deck uh, to uh, make killer online talks and courses. Uh, it walks you through the, uh, the process of setting something like this up and what you can do with it. Uh, very, very good. I wanted y'all to see that. And if you're interested in OBS, uh, Power of open source software right there. I love it. Um, and I see Fridun Hussein asks, uh, I'm 43. Uh, is it possible to become a web designer in this age? I'm trying to learn and also bought Divi, but I'm not sure. And the answer to that is yes. Yes, 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 yes. Hardcore yes, 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 yes. Um, yes. Uh, there is absolutely nothing stopping you. I know many people in this industry who changed from... Uh, from something else at a later date than that later age. Uh, don't worry about that. The age has absolutely nothing to do with it. Uh, the hustle has everything to do with it. Honestly, uh, the biggest thing, I mean, I was 30, 34 whenever I quit teaching. I think 34, how old was I? 33. I was 33 when I stopped teaching, uh, and moved into web design. And just the idea of starting over, even at that age, was terrifying. And I put in six good months of professional development, and I was able to start, you know, really landing gigs, getting involved in the community, that kind of thing. And that is my number one uh, suggestion to you. And I see Uncle uh, Social, or excuse me, not Uncle Social, uh, George uh, in on YouTube says... Uh, the same thing. Don't be scared. The Divi community is cool. Uh, and that is it. The community is everything. 
rely on us. Rely on, uh, let ask for help. Uh, whatever it is that you need, there is someone out there who can help you with that. Uh, there is a Divi Facebook group that Elegant Themes runs. It's called uh, Divi Theme Users. Uh, you can find it. Uh, I'm a moderator there. Raquel, there are also other people there. Um, it's wonderful. Uh, we have a meetup network that uh, may be around where you are. You can check that out uh, on meetup.com. It's the Divi Nation, uh, Divi Pro Meetup. Um, it's official. Uh, they're they're wonderful. Again, the COVID nineteen thing is kind of putting things uh, in person on a, on you know hold. There are probably going to be a lot of virtual things going on. Um, there is a lot of a uh, lot of stuff out there on Discord and Slack. Um, actually, if you look at our blog and you just look at the top of elegantthemes.com slash blog, and you just type in YouTube or uh, podcasts or uh, Discord or Slack, there are a lot of different Slacks and things like that that you can become a part of to be able to uh, to really make these connections. There's official WordPress Slacks. Uh, there are probably local development ones as well. And I say all this, I throw all of this at you to say that the community is how to succeed in this. Um, anything that you can do to, to make those connections will be the most important thing that you can have. Uh, you won't be able to go to any lunches, unfortunately. That would that helped me a great deal or conferences, but online stuff like this is great. Take advantage of this. Uh, reach out to other people and other other piece other parts of the community uh, on Facebook on other platforms to just get to know. But yeah, you can totally, totally, totally start uh, being a designer and developer at uh, 43. You can start doing. I see uh, Michael says I'm 54. How long have uh, you been doing this, Michael? Are you new to it as well? Uh, I know there are people who are watching right now who are in their uh, in their late 60s who had uh, mentioned it in the past. Uh, who are who are well? I say who are probably watching, and it's just like this is open. Don't worry about that. Uh, age has absolutely nothing to do with it. Some of the great things I've seen uh, have come from people in their early 20s as well, who I wouldn't have expected had the ex expertise with the platform uh, and their teens, as well as people who are in their late 60s making these just, just mind-blowing things. Like, does not matter at all. Just take advantage of the community. And then Peter says, OMG, there's a WordPress channel. <laughs> and yes, there, there is. I hope you're talking about us. There are a bunch out there. So hopefully you'll be able to find those. Unfortunately, it's a little past my time. I'm about to turn into a pumpkin, y'all. Uh, so I wanted to thank you for joining us. Make sure that you check the links in the description out. We didn't get to anywhere near all of them, but they're all going to be helpful. Uh, you can go excuse me, you can go uh, check the archive of this uh, whenever we finish this stream and find out all of the other previous weeks. Uh, and you can check out the uh, other live streams that we do on Tuesday afternoons at 3 p.m. Uh, Jason and Donietta right here will do a Divi live stream that shows how to use Divi in a particular way. Uh, you can learn so much from watching their, their tutorials and their walkthroughs. Uh, their use cases, you just get to see their work their workflows. It's great. Uh, I do this every Friday afternoon, so uh, you can tune in here at 3 p.m. Eastern and uh, get this uh, and interact and have a conversation, ask questions, and uh, and really just uh, just share uh, what we know uh, and friendliness. And then on Monday mornings after theme updates, after feature releases, uh, Mac gets on uh, at 5 a.m. No, at 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, to go through that feature uh, update, and it uh, it is a wonderful place to ask questions and learn a lot about the new one. Um, it is absolutely great talking to y'all. Um, I see that uh, Uncle Social has a Telegram channel called Divi Casual, uh, so y'all go out and join that. Y'all join up the Divi community however you can. Uh, get get the word out. Help people uh, love each other. Uh, be nice. We please stay at home, everybody. Uh, be be safe, be be healthy. I wish you all nothing but the best. Uh, please, please, please take care of yourselves. Don't shake anybody's hand. And uh, I will see you all next Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern. Bye, everybody. <laughs>